Welcome to College Street Victory Church. You're listening to the weekly podcast with Pastor Matt Funk. Um, Before we kind of get started today, I'm going to tell you a story. I was driving here in our vehicle and... uh, All of a sudden, I was like, oh, it smells weird in here. (laughs) But realizing that I forgot to take the garbage out. So, and we are privileged to live in a place where we can take out our garbage ourselves and take it to the dumpster whenever we need to. But you have to take it there. You just put the garbage in the car and don't take it out and it will be in your car. But I was thinking, okay, now I'm going to church and then... Uh, somebody's going to park my car for me, which means they're going to smell this garbage. And (laughs) so just having these thoughts and then thinking like, why? Like, why didn't I just take out the garbage? And I say all that to say is that um, sometimes we come to church forgetting to take out the garbage. You know what I mean? Sometimes we come, we've got some things that happen during the week. Maybe somebody said the wrong thing. Maybe we're hanging on to some unforgiveness from the Thanksgiving family gathering. Or we stubbed our toe on the way to something fun. And it ruined our day. But sometimes we can. We can keep the garbage. But you don't have to. So why don't we just take a minute and just close your eyes. (laughs) Put your hand on your heart. Whatever it is that you've been hanging on to. Whatever piece of garbage that is not serving you today. That is not going to help you receive for the word of God today. That is not helping you with relationship with others or Jesus. Just let's just give it to God in this moment and say, God, can you help me with this, please? I don't want it anymore. Let's just take out the garbage. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace in this space. We thank you, God, that uh, that you make all things new. And we thank you that this is the day that you have made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, that your mercies are made new every morning and great is your faithfulness even when ours isn't great great is your faithfulness thank you jesus that uh god both in the natural and in the and in the spirit god we can take out the garbage and so we just come before you and we desire to come before you with a clean heart in jesus name amen all right i'm gonna sit for a bit but not the whole time so We'll be comfy with you for a sec. Um, we are in part two of our Mo Money series. Who is having fun so far? All right. Who was here last week? It was pretty great. Like, my husband brought it last week. It was very, very good. So I'm not the same as him, but I do have something to say today. So if you have some way to take notes, I just really encourage you to do that. We, we do have notes on you version, but not all of them are there. So you have to add in some of what I'm going to say today. It's going to be good. But last week, Pastor Matt talked about uh, Matthew 25, and he talked about the parable of the talents, right? And how God has given us things. He's given us gifts, and he's given us blessings, but he's expecting us to use them. He is looking for a return. And, uh, and, but it's for our benefit. It's for our benefit that we use the gifts and the blessings that he's given to us. And everything that he gives us is designed to flow through us, not just to make us fat. Make sense? So that was awesome. And today I'm going to be in Luke chapter 15. So if you want to get there already, we are going to be, okay, I can't sit here. I'm going to twist around. (laughs) But um, so we're going to be in Luke 15 today, but just chatting about money for a second. Uh, We all use money. And if I was to hand out a journal to each one of you and say, okay, go home this week and write down everything you spend money on, um, and then you brought it back to me and I read it, I would see some similar things. I would see that, oh, you need to pay your rent and you need to pay your telephone and you need to buy food and you need to buy gas. Most people put up your hand if you spend money on those things. Most people do. But there's also going to be differences. There's going to be people that spend money to get their hair done. And there's going to be people that spend money on yarn and people that don't spend money on yarn and (laughs) things like that, right? Because we're all different and that's okay. It doesn't mean they're bad and you're good. It just means that we have different priorities. So what I want to really land on today is that there's some non-negotiables that we all have and there's some things that are going to be different for each person. But a non-negotiable, I want us to add both to our financial budget, but just our life budget too, is investing in the kingdom of God. Okay? 
All right, so let's jump over to uh, Luke chapter 15. So read along with me. I'm going to read it from the Bible, so I'm not going to be looking at you. I'm going to be looking at the Bible, so might as well follow along. I'm going to be reading from the, from the NIV. Um, we're going to start over. I would like to, when you are in your connect groups this week, I want you to read the whole chapter together, okay? Or on your own. But for today, I'm going to start with the last of three stories, and that is the parable of the lost son. Okay. So Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country. What timing. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with even the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandal on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. But the older brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him? My son, the father, said, You are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Let's clap for the word of God this morning. It's interesting. My, uh, my kids are great. My middle son asked me what I was speaking about today. And so I was trying to just tell him the parable of the prodigal son in his words as we were driving, <laughs> um, which was just, just an interesting moment. But um, we're going to kind of get into this throughout the whole message. But in the end, it was the older brother whose heart was not in the right place. Isn't that right? And it says, the Bible says this, that God sets the solitary in families, but the rebellious dwell in the dry land. So the older brother here, he's in the house the whole time, but he ends up being further from the father's heart. He started to see the house as a place of slavery instead of a place of sonship. Now, the younger son, he had now realized, you know, my father was trying to protect me. My father's rules and boundaries were there for a blessing. You know, once we start to act or feel like we're owed something, that's when we start to live disappointed. Isn't that right? You know, God, we, and we can think that about God as well. And God, you know, he tends to not do things the way we t would script it out for him. <laughs> but the thing is, that's actually a good thing because he knows better. He sees the big, big, bigger picture and his ways are so much better. And that's why we need God. You know, Luke chapter 15 is three stories that work together, all right? So the first story is about a lost sheep. So there's a hundred sheep, 
and one is lost. And the shepherd, he leaves the 99 and he goes after the one. And when he finds that one lost sheep, he rejoices over it. And in the same way, the Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one person repents over the 99 that don't think they need to. The second story is about a woman with 10 coins and she lost one. Now, it wasn't like she had 10 pennies. It was like, think of it like, your diamond ring has 10 diamonds and you lost one of them. That, <laughs> you want to find it, right? So she takes a lamp and she searches all over until she finds her that lost coin. And when she finds it, she calls her family and her friends and she rejoices over it and they rejoice with her. And then we come to the prodigal son. So we've had 100 sheep, we've had 10 coins, and now we're here to two sons. And we can see, we can see God in all this. So Jesus is the good shepherd coming down, finding the sheep, laying his life down for them. You know, and then we see the Holy Spirit represented in the lamp, you know, as the, as the woman is looking for her coin. It's the lamp that lights the way, but it also illuminates our need for God. Then we get to the prodigal son and we see the father, the father representing God the father. He's there. He's waiting to welcome, lovingly welcome us into the kingdom. You know, as Jesus goes out and look for us, looks for us and the Spirit draws us to the Father. And it's an interesting picture as we kind of go back and see the whole chapter that God himself dwells and works in community. And in the same way, he calls us to live in community. He calls us to live in right standing with him, but in right relation to others as well. You know, and it's important to grow. It's important to be able to read the word and to worship and to pray on our own. There's a time for that. But there's a time for family time too, is there not? Again, the Bible says he sets the solitary in families, but the rebellious live in a dry land. So that means... It's always, we see it time and time again, when we get isolated, we get stuck. Or Pastor Matt says, we get stupid. <laughs> when we get stuck, we get stupid. But um, we're not meant to do this life alone. And we, if we only have our own thoughts, it's hard to solve problems that our own thoughts made with our own thoughts. <laughs> yeah. And what I want to help you see today is that one of God's favorite names for community is the house. And so here we are. This is God's house. And we're in it together today. We are God's home. And I want to help you to see that the house always wins. So here in our church as leadership and volunteers, we always start with wins. And, and the main reason we do that isn't necessarily directed to related to my message, but the main reason we start with wins is because we're naturally negative people. <laughs> so we like to point out problems. But when we start with wins, it gets our focus right. But what does it mean? What are, what are the wins for choosing to live in community in God's house? What are the wins? So I'm just going to do a quick acronym here. If you want to write it down, it won't be on the screen. But W stands for worship. All right. And the true fact is that if we don't worship God, we will worship something else. We were made to worship. And in the house of God, there is power when we worship together. You know, and again, we are to, over and over again, the Bible says, it talks about us as sons and daughters and sisters and brothers. That means it's talking about us as family, not just individuals, right? So worshiping together as brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. You know, in the world today, the majority of people describe themselves as lonely. And at the same time, studies have shown that even going to church one time a week, they're 68% less likely to die a death of despair from suicide, drug overdose, or alcohol poisoning just by going to church once a week. You know, God has chosen to bless the unity of people coming together to worship God. And the Bible says, too, that every time our voices are lifted together, that Jesus lifts his voice up to the Father. You know, have you ever been in, in this room and just felt that, that presence of God so strong? And you know it's not, it's not natural. 
but that's Jesus lifting up his voice with ours to the Father. How beautiful is that? In the assembly, Psalm 22, 22 says, says that. All right. So that's W. <laughs> I stands for identity. You know, the church is a place where we can go to remind each other of our identity. You know, it's not so much out there in the world. You know, um, in the world, we've got to prove ourselves. We've got to do something special to be special. That's the, that's the weight that's there. But you know what? God, he doesn't base our identity on us. He's placed it on us. So when we go to church and we can be around people that love Jesus and we worship together, we're reminded of who we are. And those things of earth can pass away, you know, and all those things that may have seemed so important will fade in the light of God's glory and grace. Isn't that right? There's so everything on earth is temporary. But yeah, again, it isn't based on you, it's placed on you. And if you're sitting here feeling like, man, I haven't been a good Christian this week. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to church. But how good and kind and wonderful and merciful is our God, the friend of sinners like me and like you. But how great. We can come in. We can get built up. We can get strong. We can go out there, get on mission to save the world, right? Change the world with the message of the gospel and Jesus in us. So that's I. All right, the letter N, network. When you come to church, you get to be a part of something. Again, um, you get to be connected with people and help each other with the gifts that we have because we all have different strengths and gifts and abilities and also things we really need help with. <laughs> you know, when I was a young person, younger person, I heard this story about these trees. Um, I think they're called redwood trees or sequoia trees or something. And I don't know a whole lot about them, but I remember that they are, they grow in circles. So even though their roots don't always go down deep, it matters where they're planted and that they're connected. So it might be an old tree and a young tree and a sick tree and a healthy tree all in the same circle. But because they're made that way and they're made to be connected, the trees can adjust to each other's needs. It's like if one needs something, yeah, so just crazy, but just that, that connection and where you're planted is extremely important. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that, except for, I always say it, but somebody needs to know if you're going in for surgery tomorrow, somebody needs to know your garage code when you, you know, and you need something or your, or whatever. Someone needs to know your phone number. <laughs> we need to be connected. You know, I've heard it so many times where it's like, oh, they got, they were, they got isolated, made bad choices, went, you know, it's just, isolation is the worst. It is, it is probably one of Satan's biggest weapons when we get off by ourselves, when we get out in the fray. No, we need to be together. We need to have our shields up, but we need to be together. All right, S stands, S stands for service. So, while we're on earth, we get to fight for those that still don't know that heaven loves them. And again, God doesn't need us to do him any favors, but we need us to serve God. You know, it's for our own benefit in that way. Um, in Israel, there's two lakes. One is the Dead Sea and one is the Sea of Galilee. Okay, and they're both fed by the Jordan River. One has living fish, one has no living fish. Um, so yeah, one has life, one doesn't. And what's the difference? The Dead Sea just takes in and keeps it. The Sea of Galilee moves. So the water comes in and the water comes out. Again, if we just keep taking in and we don't do anything. So what happens in, in the Dead Sea is that the water might evaporate and then there's just more and more salt. So if we're just salty, nobody's going to want to talk to us after a little while. <laughs> But again, we're, we're made to be that way. And who wants, you know, who wants to be around somebody that's like, I'm not going to do anything for anybody. I'm just going to be here and you better do the things I want you to do. Those aren't pleasant people. But we're made to that. We're made to work. We're made to serve. You know, and, and serving helps us to become all that God calls us to be. Again, if you just take, 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 you're not going to be super fun to be around. But just, just thoughts today. But you know, Okay, 
So just keeping that in mind, these are kind of like my three takeaways today, and they should be in your notes as well, but just benefits to investing in the house of God according to the Bible. So number one, when planted, we prosper. So really everything, God and heaven, they're paying attention. Everything that we financially give or that we give of ourselves will have a return both in this lifetime and in the next. You know, Psalm 92 verse 13 says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. God wants us to be alive. He wants us to be a river that's flowing and flourishing and fresh and moving and moving forward. But he says we'll prosper when we live a life that's not just about ourselves and we live in community with people that can help us and that we can help too. Number two is when we partner, we profit. What does that mean? Well, Philippians 4, 17 says, not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. And when I talk about account, that's talking about your heavenly account. So again, if you, if you give or you serve or you don't give and you don't serve, God will find someone else. It's going to be okay. He's going to take care of the house. It's going to be all right. But the point is, he wants you to experience the blessings, both in this life and the next. Number three is, when persecuted, we will prevail. You know, and when we read the Bible, we realize that the world hated Jesus. So it shouldn't shock us that the church will experience this too. John 12, 24 says, Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And you know, we've seen, if you look back at history, you see what the church has gone through different times and in different places. But we see that every time the church has been persecuted, that they have thrived, multiplied, and spread hasn't kept them down. You know, maybe it's looked different, but no, there's nothing stopping. Nothing stopping it. The church is God's plan A. And we need to pray for the persecuted church worldwide. But you know what? We also need to step back and look at, in awe of the beauty of it, because when you read scripture, you see what has happened and what is to come and that we have a place in history in this time and it's important you know you have to be i know there's maybe 0.1 percent of people that don't watch the news or go on social media but you have to be sleeping all the time or dead to not realize that there is some major things happening in the world right now and that they do impact us and if they aren't impacting you today they will impact you at some point and as believers we do play a part and we need to be praying for the church. We need to be praying for this church and asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us that we walk in truth and we walk correctly and that we are not doing damage, but that we, well, the only damage we're doing is to the enemy, to the kingdom of darkness, to evil, spiritual wickedness in high places, which is demonic activity around leaders of countries. You know, and... We just need to wake up a little bit. You know, I had some conversations from either from, well, I don't really care, or this has always been happening to, well, we just need to be at peace with everyone. But I want to tell you today that we are not to make peace with evil. <laughs> so let's just, let's keep our blinders off and keep, our ears open to what the Spirit is saying in this time. The beautiful thing about persecution is again, that God knows he's won, he is going to win um, again. But the beauty that comes through what he can do through us in those times of persecution, you know, we experience these types of things on different levels and in different ways, but God will always be glorified. And if we can go, if the worst thing that happens to us is that we lose our life, then we get to go to heaven. You know, you know, it's not the worst thing. It's not. That's the best thing. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that today. But the, there's a, 
a, graph, a bit of a graphic quote, but I want to bring it home by, by Charles Spurgeon. It says, The ship of the church never sails so gloriously along as when the bloody spray of her martyrs falls on her deck. And again, a bit graphic, but realizing we say often here that the church is a battleship, not a cruise ship. We're not here to be comfy and to complain about when the coffee's not hot enough. We're really like, we're, we need to get alongside our brothers and sisters. We need to fight for each other and we need to fight against evil. We need to fight for justice and we need to stand together. Like how effective are we when we gossip in a circle or when we're complaining? Like just stop it. We don't have time for that anymore. We don't have time for base camp conversations. We need to get moving now. And so I'm going to kind of wrap this part up with this. It's, it's not going to be a waste of your time or your money or your life to invest in the kingdom of God be, and into the church because it is the only thing that is going to last is the kingdom of God. And as a church, this is God's plan. It is God's plan. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 8, Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Yeah. The church wins. God wins. We got to get in the game. You know, if you're here today and you're like, okay, you've been maybe on the fence about giving your life to Jesus. You've just been kind of checking it out and waiting and seeing. I want to ask you today to stop waiting and seeing because Jesus is for you. He came to earth and he died for you that you might have life now and eternity with him. But we can't mess around. You know, I got word yesterday that someone that we were privileged to meet during COVID times in this church and we were able to baptize him and have a small part in his journey. And then we just got word yesterday that he passed away. And you know, unfortunate circumstances brought him into isolation and to wrong relationships and he took his own life. And if that can maybe just serve to drive my point home a little bit more, don't let your people isolate don't isolate. Be around people that are life-giving, that are going to pray for you, that are going to fight through darkness with you. And at the same time, the times are precious. Yeah, maybe you think you have tomorrow, but you don't know that. If you need to make some things right today, do it today. If you haven't given your heart to Jesus, do it today. If you know you need to get baptized, do it today. Bible says, what are you waiting for? So if I get you to stand to your feet, I'm going to give you an opportunity for both those things. We're just going to pray a simple prayer saying, God, I believe in you. I believe that you died and that you rose again so that I could have salvation and eternal life with you. And then as we worship, we will open up the baptism tank and you're welcome to come forward anytime. Um, Coach Vince will be here to help as well for, bapt for baptism. But why don't you just repeat after me? We're going to ask Jesus to come in. Dear Jesus, I confess that you are God. And I believe that you died for me and that you rose again so that I could have life. I ask you now to forgive me of my sin. I thank you that right now, my past is now past, and I can begin a new life with you right here, right now. In Jesus' name, I commit to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Just keep your eyes closed for a moment. If that's you today and you decided today's your day, now is your moment to give your heart to Jesus, can you raise your hand up high? So I can see, thank you. It's dark in this place, but raise it up for yourself as well. Just saying, yes, I'm choosing today. And if you're here in the house and you're making a fresh commitment to follow Jesus for real, like today matters, can you put your hands in the air and just say, yes, God, I'm here. I'm your soldier. I'm ready to go. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing a new song this morning about God's faithfulness. He's faithful through, through the good and the really hard and all everything in between. 
And as we do again, if you'd like to be baptized, come on forward. If you just want to come down the front and worship with your whole heart, you're welcome to do that too. All right. Thank you for tuning in today and thank you for continuing to partner with us and for giving so generously to this ministry. If you would like to find out more about how you can partner with us, visit our website at www.wherepeoplematter.church and click the giving link. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. See you next time. Thank you.